Hello guys, welcome to our virtual barbershop barbarian. In this tutorial, we are going to do a haircut. Um, wait a minute. I mean, draw a digital hair with Clip Studio Paint. I'd like to give you 5 tips when drawing hair in Clip Studio Paint. Some of the tips will also be useful for traditional media, but let's go virtual first. So this is OpenSea, a collection of my NFT artworks, consisting of customers and their haircut. As you can see, I've minted some of my digital arts here. Let's get back to CSP. Click File, New. Choose or type any name for your image. And you can have any width and height on the canvas. But I stick to IG size with 300 resolution. I will skip on how I made the barber. In the group folder, I prepare the new layer. Then I find my 3D body shape from CSP. You can also go to Window, Material and find the material body type. Hold left click on your mouse button and drag the 3D female body type into the canvas. The icon that I click is the camera position of my 3D character. For the tutorial purpose, let's click on the left position. Rotate the 3D with left click mouse and zoom it out with right click mouse. Or you can navigate with those icons on the top of 3D model. Anyway, the perk of using 3D model, you can decrease the opacity of the model, so it can easier to trace. And it's possible to adjust the head position to your liking. position on top of my 3D model to create the draft. I'm using a standard G pen to start my initial drawing. I'm fast forwarding this video, because everyone has a personal style. Usually, after done with my sketch, I add some shadow with pencil. One of my favorites is the design pencil. This kind of shading is my usual technique, to give a sense of three-dimensional form. Moving on to the ink, or cleanup process, with another new layer. I used to ink my draft with mapping pen. It depends on your pressure. So let me give the first tip. Tip number one, think big shapes. Create a new layer for color blocking. I use auto select then click on the background. Use control, shift, and I keyboard shortcut to invert the selection. Auto-fill the selection, using Alt and Backspace. Click Lock Transparent Pixel before separating the color. I separate the face and the hair using Turn of Pen. After finishing the color separation, I create another layer for shadow. Simply choose three different values of shadows from the standard color set. Go back to the blocking layer. Here's my trick to select the same color gamut. Now the selection only selects the hair. Then I go to shadow layer to add values with turn of pen. Tip number 2. Values over details. Turn off the blocking layer to see the values much better. No need to draw every detail. Let the empty space behind. After done, let's hide these values with clip to layer below. First, I turn on blocking layer. I go to shadow, then clip to layer below. From the video, you'll see I pre-made the shadows and highlights for the face. On the blocking layer, I select the hair with gamut before adjusting the color. Then with Ctrl, Shift, and U to bring hue, saturation, and luminosity. 
play along with the hue to change the color. Saturation to the contrast and luminosity for the brightness. Changing layers mode from normal to multiply or overly to suit your case. Decreasing opacity is also a good option. Hopefully, you can get your own style by overlay blending mode, soft airbrush, or even other brushing techniques. Also, different color variations could make a nice touch too. It took me around 30 minutes to 1 hour to complete this NFT artwork. Enjoy the process but remember, don't get stuck with details. In the end, every hair strand will not be visible too much. Moving along, let's go to my additional tip. Tip number 3. Clip Studio Panorama. Go to Window, Material, 3D. It will show the Material panel. Your material will be different from mine, because some of them were downloaded from Clip Studio Assets. I choose Park Panorama, drag it into the canvas. I created a group for the background. Use scroll wheel to zoom in and out for a proper distance. Then rotate the views with left click mouse. Panorama is the best quick solution so far for me. This NFT character is a druid, and I need to make her look like living in the jungle. I wish to make a blurry background, but it won't let me. My solution is to rasterize the layer first. So I go to the panorama layer, right click, then choose rasterize. Additionally, you can lower the opacity to make it less contrast. But the point is, after rasterize now you can blur the background. 20 for the strength, but you may pick whatever you wish. Please note, after rasterize you can't rotate the camera views. Better you duplicate the panorama first before rasterizing. Tip number 4, using vector layer. Start with new vector layer, besides the raster layer. You can start with anything to ink, but I prefer a sharp, mapping pen. This is an advanced technique that requires patience. While you're inking, try to maintain your velocity whenever you stroke the pen. Be brave but don't stress yourself. Now with Operation Tool, select Object Subtool. You can see there are too many dots within a line. It's challenging to edit the whole hair. But I've got a solution. Go to the Control Line Tool, choose Simplify Vector Line. As you can see, all the complicated dots were gone. Use Connect Vector Line to join two separate lines. Now it's easier for you to adjust each of the lines with the Control Point tool. A vector eraser would be good to remove unwanted lines. Those are options that you can try too. When using the Control Point tool, Hold the ALT button to remove the point. Click on the lines instead to add them. That's all the tips for creating vector lines. Now we move to color with the reference layer. With a new layer, go to the fill tool. Select refer other layers. Check the option refer multiple and you can see its point to reference layer. Fill with your color choice. It will automatically fill each part separately by vector lines. If there are gaps, use any reliable pen tool to refill them. Since the color blocking underneath the vector layer, you can change the color simply by dropping any colors to fill. 
The vector layer separates them nicely. Now let's go with the last tip. Tip number 5. Blending tricks. I use auto select for the hair. Either way, you can make the gamut selection too. Then, I chose airbrush and painted it with a new layer. Using soft airbrush, also bright colors, you can see I make my brush big. This also applies to traditional paint. When you need to do blending, pick a bigger brush and think less about details. Here's my first blending trick. Imagine using pen tool with for effect line. It's like dropping colors before blending them all. My second trick, use the blend tool. Choose fingertip. Then imagine if this is soft oil pastel, you smudge the bright blue with your fingers. The third trick, you can add a shiny looking hair strand by using watercolor brush. Choose something like dense watercolor or anything that suits your style. Finally, if you wish to brighten some areas of the hair, I recommend choosing airbrush than highlights. All in all, it's about your experiment throughout Clip Studio default brushes. Changing the colors of the hair would be easier, as it only affects the layer that I'm currently working on it. Okiku is a Japanese doll with black hair. I just changed the saturation and luminosity. Adding the highlights with a new layer is also recommended if it seems a bit dull. But don't forget, you can use clip to layer below for the highlights only layer. And that's all about it. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoy my tips.